structure that we have that we've been doing this work in. Thanks. Yeah, so this is, um, this follows on quite sort of directly from, uh, from Gunilla's uh, talk. So she, the, the, um, Gunilla outlined the, this model, model improvement um, and into comparison project. And, uh, and this is sort of one of these aspects for one of the sort of sub projects in there. Uh, I'd obviously like to thank my co-authors. So there's a mixture of MMDF makers and MOD, MODF makers as well as sort of data experts and uh, um, uh, and there's, so there's there's a you know there's a there's a lot of sort of co contributions going into into all of this. Uh, and I think you know one of, this is kind of one of the motivating slides. I mean we've you know there's been a few examples in other talks um, already uh, yesterday and today about the sort of issues with process representation and uh, particularly in the boundary layer uh, and, and forecasting sort of boundary layer parameters in the Arctic. And this is this is a um, sort of uh, Highlights the sort of the problem from the um, in, in, uh, of forecasting Arctic temperature um, in the uh, in, in the ECMWF forecasts, and this is showing um, a fraction of large two meter temperature errors um, in the ECMWF ensemble. So that's um, where, where the this, the CRPS or the um, uh, continu continuous rank probability score is larger than um, than five degrees. And you can see that this, this, you can, and this sort of compares that fraction in the Arctic um, to that fraction over Europe and the, and, the, and the Northern Hemisphere extratropics. And you can see that that fraction of, of, of those large errors is, 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 is around double um, what it is in, um, in, in the extratropics. Um, and obviously we'd like, to, we'd like to start thinking about uh, trying to improve this. Uh, and to do that, we're, um, uh, doing this into comparison project. So these are the, um, the the models that are contributing. So I'm going to focus mainly on the models and the analysis of them rather than the um, the observations because that's going to be um, covered in, uh, in in some of the other talks later in this session um, and also in the OPSITE MIP session later. Uh, but we have a mixture of, um, of modeling uh, centers contributing to this. So um, some of them are global, some are regional. Um, and, uh, and they've all provided um, forecasts for uh, the, special the OPS special observing periods. Um, and I'm going to focus mainly on the, the first special observing period in the Arctic, which was uh, February and March 2018. Um, and these are the locations. So you can see the, the domains um, up here um, for the CAPS model uh, and the Aram Arctic model. Uh, and you can also see the sites that we're interested in. So I've, I'm going to be focusing on the Arctic sites, but the, um, including the Antarctic map there, because um, we have all of the model output um, from, that, from, from those sites as well. Um, and in particular, all of the white points um, are, are stations where we have um, um, MODFs or merged observatory data files um, uh, to do the event. To, to, um, uh, to, so that we can do that we can do evaluation against. Okay, and Gunilla showed this this plot earlier. So this is um, so this is the sort of the temperature errors that we have, and you know you can. Uh, it's very interesting to see that you know the errors are different in different locations, um, and this is this. But and this is a, you know obviously an important first step to actually understand what the errors are. Um, but you could you can really compute these types of scores against you know any any weather station anywhere in the in, in the world. Um, uh, but what you can't do I guess, is, is really sort of dig into the, in, into the processes and, and to do that you really need to do um, comparisons at, um, at observatories or, or, or super sites. Um, and so I'm going to take a deeper, deeper dive into the, um, in, into the Sedankula site to sort, of, um, to sort of show some examples of the types of um, enhanced evaluation and process-oriented diagnostics that we can do when we've actually got this, this data. And I've chosen Sedankula mainly because uh, it's inside all of the domains for the, for the regional um, uh, models as well as the, the, the global models, of course, and we have a really nice sort of suite of um, observations there where we can do lots of, uh, look at lots of interesting processes. Uh, so the characteristics um, of the site, um, so it's, uh, it's in, in just, just inside the Arctic Circle in Finland. Um, it's a, a forested site, um, sort of interspersed with, um, with, with clearings. Uh, at this time of year, there's, uh, there's snow on the ground, and there's a really great sort of um, uh, suite of observations there, including this 50-meter um, mast. 
which has you know, wind speed, temperature, turbulent fluxes, but also, crucially, there's observations of the, um, of the snow um, and, the, uh, and the soil as well, and lots of, lots of other things besides. And this allows us to actually do, I mean, the, what, things like this sort of conditional verification. So, um, so this is looking at, you know, so looking at day two, hourly data from day two of the, the various forecasting systems. And what I've done here is, you know, you can see these sort of large um, nighttime errors um, in, the, um, in, the, in this sort of like lead time um, uh, averaged plot. Um, but here you can see that actually the, that the errors are actually much largest um, where the near surface thermal stratification, so that's just the temperature difference between the, the top and the bottom of, the, of, of, of this mast, um, a lot is large. And you can see that actually it's like this in all of the forecasting systems. So you can really see that there's like co common issues in terms of um, forecasting temperatures uh, during stable, uh, stable conditions. Uh, and this, I mean, this, is, this isn't sort of new information. Um, it, it, this, is, this was sort of shown to be uh, the case by this, um, in this 2012 paper from uh, Alaskan and Vima. Um, but you can see that it's a real characteristic of all of the forecasting systems that we've got. And, and, and these, the, 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 some of these things have not been fixed yet. Um, so what more can we learn um, about it with, with, with the data that we have? So we can do these, uh, make composite profiles using observations from the site, so we can look at the vertical structure of the, the errors. So this is showing um, uh, from left to right is the temperature, wind speed, uh, and the humidity um, at Sedankula, um, just in the stable conditions. Um, and then like the same for the mass, so the black is the, um, is, is the uh, as the profiles in, uh, from the mast in the, top, in the lower 50, me 50 meters. Um, and you can see that, that, that these temperature errors are not, um, apart from in the case of Aromatic, which, is, which does, a, does a very, quite, a, quite a nice job of representing the, the sort of the near surface inversion in temperature, um, most of the other models are, uh, are a bit too sort of isothermal. Uh, and all of them are too, um, are too uh, um, uh, 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 have to have too low, specific, uh, too high specific humidity. Okay, so why is this? So one, one of the underlying causes is the fact that we, or one of the sort of features of, of stable conditions is that, if, so looking at this sort of histogram of the sensible heat flux, you can see that actually the, um, in stable conditions where the, where the fluxes are sort of downwards, so, so, ne so negative in this, all, the magnitude of them is, is, is much too large. So the observations are in black and the different colors of the different models. Um, and all of these, uh, all of these points uh, here and here, um, the, flux, the magnitude of the fluxes is too large. So that's nice. We have, uh, um, we, you know, we, have we, we, can, we actually have the fluxes there so we can look at this. But what we can also do is, um, is actually start to look at this um, in, in the phase space which is relevant for the parameterization. So this is look at, so, so we parameterize the um, sensible heat flux um, as a function of the um, wind speed and the temperature difference between the lowest model level and the surface. And so we can uh, sort of scale the sensible heat flux uh, by the wind speed on the y-axis and then the temperature difference um, on, on the, uh, uh, on, on the x-axis, so uh, Gunilla showed a plot like this um, from uh, one of Amy Solomon's papers um, for the mosaic, and you can actually, and, and so you can actually see how the how, how this process is parameterized. And indeed, if you look at if you look at this um, this section, you know the the where the the, the part where we got where, where things are stable and the and the sensible heat flux is directed towards the surface, you can see that the actually the even in this space the um, the, the fluxes are too um, are too uh, uh, are too large, um, and I think it's the case for all of the models. So they're just uh, so 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 potentially they're, they're, it might be that it's possible to sort of re revise the sort of the function um, to sort of re remove this. And we can also do the same for we can also look at this in the um, in, for the momentum. So the surface stress um, is parameterized in a similar way as a function of the, the square of the wind speed. And then we can um, sort of yeah, so we can plot the, the t both of these terms and then the slope of this 
um, is essentially proportional to the um, to the roughness length plus a, um, plus a, uh, some 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 accounting for the, for the static stability, and you can see that actually this is whilst the plot before the models all looked like relatively similar, I'd say in stable conditions. In this, in this one, you can see that there's actually quite a lot of variations um, in the in uh, um, and and I think this is mainly coming from the fact that the roughness length uh, are, are very different. So. Um, so the observation, in the observations, the roughness length is about 1.6, um, and then some of the models have, it, have, have, have sort of a similar, similar value. So you can see that the IFS is potentially uh, a bit too, uh, has, you know, might have a roughness length which is slight, slightly too large. Um, and then sort of in our aromatic um, and icon DWD, it's slightly too, too, um, slightly too small, and you can see this um, in this gradient here, um, not sort of matching up quite with the, the gradient in the observations. And so if you, and, and if you, um, and, th and I guess this is where the, the difficulty comes because if you um, look at the wind speeds in this pr picture here, if you um, increase the roughness length for aromatic, which is a bit too fast, uh, it would probably be beneficial for the winds. But if you did it for ICON uh, DWD um, here, uh, then, it, then the wind speed, then the wind speed forecast would actually get a bit too low. So, so, it, so, it, so it's suggesting that there's some other sort of compensating errors there, which would need to be addressed. Um, okay, and I'm just going to, and then just to just to conclude on some um, future work. So, we'd like to extend this type of analysis to um, other Arctic sites um, uh, and, and 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 to the Antarctic SOPs. Uh, but we're also keen to sort of extend the MODFs to include more parameters at more locations uh, and more components um, so that we can do more, but better, start to better use the um, uh, observations in the model development process. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Johnny. I think it's a very interesting talk showing the, the progress you made on the upside peep and the format of the file and the comparison, so it's very useful. So, question now for Johnny. No? <laughs> Would you like to comment a little bit for the group? You were showing the um, results from Sodankula, mm. and Gwenilla was talking, showing some of the results about how different they are for the different sites, because the Arctic is such an imahonogeneous. Do you want to give people sort of a teaser about how you would expect these results to vary from the different sites? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, yeah, I think, I think the different sites have quite, quite different characteristics, so these sort of so th the sort of things that we find are um, limitations of the parameterizations um, here might not necessarily be the same at some of the tundra sites, for example, where uh, you know potentially it's a little bit easier to characterize things like the aerodynamic roughness and, and the, those sorts of things. So I think it's uh, I think I think the, the point is is that they're very different. And actually, if we want to do a good job of actually uh, representing these sort of empirical relationships in our models, we probably need to look at all the sites. Thank you. Ah, last one. Yes, we have time. One minute. Yes, uh, just a quick question. So we ran in some of our comparisons that we have made uh, into the issue that the models don't actually uh, calculate the two meter temperature as part of their what to do on the grid, but it's always a parameterized or derived uh, property. And it's mm. kind of the bread and butter of observations is to measure at two meters. Do you have some comments on that? Mm. Um, so in, in my in my slide, I sh showed the so in the profiles um, on the on there, I, I showed like the the model level uh, as well as the two meter temperature in the surface, um, and I think you could see from that that the that it you know this that, that they weren't sort of out out particularly sort of out of li line with each, with each other. So the two meter temperature seemed to be fairly sort of locked with the, uh, you know, the low, lowest model level temperature. And so I wouldn't expect that even if uh, there w was an, you know, it, 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 
my, yeah, I, I would sort of think that, it, however, that was sort of, if, if, you know, if that was better parameterized, you'd still have the sort of the issues that are coming from the sort of the model at the prognostic level. Although I think, you know, it, 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 you know as, as you actually can manage to capture a large, larger surface inversions in, in the models themselves, I think potentially this uh, exact sort of weighting that you get between the lowest model level and the surface temperature would actually, could, could actually be much more and more critical. Again, thanks. thanks. I have a question. Oh, so, okay. I'm in the, <laughs> in the right corner. Um, yeah, you mentioned the interest to extend into the Antarctic uh, YOP, and so far, well, to my knowledge, the, the two groups, the Arctic and Antarctic, have been working separately, even though we have similar goals. Do you envision how we can actually join our efforts, the two hemispheres? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've talked a little bit about, about sort of needing like a, a cha champion in the sort of southern hemisphere observational community to sort of try and sort of gather some momentum. So I think, uh, yeah, I think it would be good. It would be, it would be great if we could get some, um, some more engagement from the, um, fr from the observationalists there. But I think, you know, these things, are, a lot of it's sort of in-kind efforts and it's, you know, it's kind of hard to, can be a little bit hard to, um, uh, to, to get that sort of momentum. But yeah, let me know if you have some ideas. We have a group called the MODF Makers, which is currently all just Arctic, but um, maybe I'll try to figure out some way that we can broadcast a contact so that you can join that MODF Makers group. We have a GitLab site where we have developing code for a toolkit for making these MODFs, and it is being extended now by people who are here in this room here who are making also MMDFs, the matching model merged data files. And so I think that this putting together of modelers and observationalists, um, we have the um, infrastructure in place to do that. Thanks. Okay, and I, and I want to make one last comment about Johnny's um, presentation, a compliment that he's a modeler.